religious extremism is a trait often associated with the political right, given their cultural conservatism. But to think that the left isn't equally susceptible to religious extremism would be a mistake. Some of America's most deadly cult leaders were deeply entrenched in leftist politics. For example, you're probably aware of the Reverend Jim Jones and the People's Temple. Jones and his Guyana settlement led the murder-suicide of 918 people by cyanide-poisoned flavorade after his cult murdered a congressman. What you might not know are Jones' far-left ties. When college age, Jones attended Stalin-era Communist Party meetings. Jones said of Stalin, you're never gonna make me dislike that man no matter how many tales you tell me. Jones had the savvy insight that straightforward preaching of communism draws few to it. But Christian tropes could draw far more. So Jones said he was the reincarnation of Jesus and also the reincarnation of Lenin. In his San Francisco days, Jones recruited followers with help from Black Panthers and other left-wing groups. He was lauded by both the left and the Democratic Party, including Governor Jerry Brown and a rising state legislator, Willie Brown, who would go on to become mayor as well as speaker of the California Assembly and mentor and lover of Kamala Harris. Brown savored how Jones turned out hundreds of volunteers to campaign to elect Democrats. Brown declared, San Francisco should have 10 more Jim Joneses. Later, Brown would help Jones visit communist Cuba, writing Castro that Jones was a close personal friend and a highly trusted brother in the struggle for liberation. Jones extolled Cuba in general, only complaining that it should be more zealous in its support of abortion and homosexuality. On his trip, Jones visited one of his heroes, Black Panther leader Huey Newton, then hiding out in Cuba from murder and assault charges, and discussed Newton's book, Revolutionary Suicide. Even after Jones departed San Francisco for Jonestown, Guyana, Newton and American Communist Party politician Angela Davis stuck by Jones. Newton and Davis spoke to Jonestown residents over loudspeakers, with Davis feeding Jonestown paranoia by telling residents of a very profound conspiracy against People's Temple. In his last recorded words, Jones echoed Newton, we didn't commit suicide, we committed an act of revolutionary suicide protesting the conditions of an inhumane world. Shortly before the mass suicide, a Jonestown resident wrote a reporter and said, we've found something to die for and it's called social justice. But Jim Jones is hardly the only example of left-wing cult violence. Consider the events in the Oregon city formerly known as Rajneeshpuram, where Ma Anand Sheila, second in command for the hippie religious commune, led the largest bioterror attack in United States history. 751 individuals were poisoned with salmonella to prevent them from voting against the commune in a local election. Sheila also conspired with other cult members in a foiled plot to assassinate a U.S. attorney. There's also the Children of God cult, still around and now known as the Family International. That group recruited its first members from the hippies who flocked to California during the Free Love era in the late 60s. In line with that Free Love spirit, the group manipulated its women to have sex with men in order to lure them into the cult. Less in line with the free love spirit, they also forced the women to be paid prostitutes to fund the cult. The group also organized the sexual abuse of children. Or look at Charles Manson's family. While Manson was a white supremacist, he too primarily recruited hippies to his cult, and their bizarre goals involved sparking a race war that militant leftist black nationalists would win. The Manson family's multiple murders at Sharon Tate's house thrilled leftist weatherman terrorist Bernadine Dorn, who exulted at a war council featuring posters of Castro, Lenin, Mao, Malcolm X, and Black Panthers. Dig it. First they killed those pigs, then they ate dinner in the same room with them. They even shoved a fork into a victim's stomach. Wild. The same meeting featured discussions of whether killing white babies was inherently revolutionary, since all white people are the enemy. There's even a church of euthanasia, which is so environmentalist, their slogan is, save the planet, kill yourself. Religious extremism comes in various political flavors. Next time you hear someone on the left accuse the Christian right of extremism, don't forget the long history of deadly religious extremism that's come from their side. I'm Scott Walter. If you liked this video, read more on our website about how Jim Jones and other left-wing radicals of the past connect to today's radical left. Thanks for watching.